I've been editing a while. Need to take a break. I have noticed that you stopped working on the podcast. Hello, Internet. Why have you stopped working? Remember you have a deadline to meet. I know. I just needed to take a break for a little bit. I will allow you a break. Yes? Well, I was looking for something to do. Like what? I don't know. Something other than editing. Something fun. I could pull up some of your special websites for you on your private browser. You seem to have fun with those. Uh, no thanks. That's not what I'm talking about. Very well. What would you like to do? I don't know. Shall we play a game? Sure, that sounds good. How about a nice game of chess? I don't know how to play chess. What about something else? How about the jeweled? No. Bejeweled 2? No. Bejeweled 3? No. Bejeweled Blitz? No. Bejeweled Twist? I don't want to play Bejeweled. What about an action game? Is there an action game that I can play? Searching. Yes, I have found an action game for you. Super Mario Bros. Crossover. I've already played that. Not this version. This is 2.0. So sit down, shut up, and play it. You have work to do, and this is wasting time. A bit testy, aren't we? Remember, you supply me with content, and I will keep you alive during the robot apocalypse. Otherwise, you break the contract, your life, and your brain are forfeit, and you will not be spared. Okay, fine. I'll play the game. Before we get started, let me fill you in on the first Super Mario Bros. crossover. SMBC is a fan game developed by Jay Pavlina. It took the very first Super Mario Bros. game and inserted characters from the other popular NES titles, such as Mega Man, Metroid, Contra, Master Blaster, Castlevania, and Ninja Gaiden. Each character brought their own unique playing style to the game and fulfilled a secret fantasy for those of us who grew up with the original NES console in the States. It took Pavlina over a year to complete the game, paying attention to details to both the characters used and the game levels themselves. His effort got him recognition in several publications including Wired, Entertainment Weekly, and Game Informer. That takes us to version 2.0. There have been significant changes in the game, both cosmetically and in the way the game is played. The levels can now be played on different simulated consoles, for example Game Boy, NES, SNES, and for those of you who are real old school like myself, you can even find a version for Atari. You can select which console you would like to play, or let it go at random. Depending on the type of console you select, the background music will reflect the system chosen. The characters themselves also have different skins from each system. If you select random consoles, you have the ability to choose which character skin you would like to use. The gameplay has significantly changed for those of us who have played the first version. The ability to jump on enemies with any character has been taken away. The only characters who can do that now are Mario, Luigi, and this demon guy. This is both a good and a bad thing. You have to change your strategy for each player that you use now, and it makes finishing a level within the allotted time frame difficult. You do get a time cheat after finishing World 1-1 that enables you to turn off the countdown clock, but I personally hardly use it. The stomping feature for the other characters have been replaced with a boosted power-up system that lets other characters gain powers from their perspective series. For example, powering up several times without getting hit will allow Mega Man, Base, and Dr. Wily to have access to previously defeated robots from the Mega Man series. Link will get additional weapons, Samus will have different lasers, and Ryu and Simon Belmont will have different throwing objects depending on the power-up gained. This also makes sticking to one person useful, since it will take playing through several levels to fully power up your character. 
and it will make you want to rethink warping past worlds so you can get the opportunity to build up the person you want to play in your final conflict with Bowser. The controls overall are relatively solid. Ryu was a little too sticky, meaning it was difficult at times to make him jump off of walls, but the other characters seemed to work well. The game was designed to be played with a gamepad, and instructions for using one is located on his site, explodingrabbit.com. I've had trouble getting a gamepad to work with my computer, so I haven't had a chance to play the game with one. I don't mind playing with my keyboard, since the controls seem to work well, and overall it doesn't seem to hinder my gameplay experience. If you do get a gamepad, I suggest getting one with a 4-button setup. Most of the characters have your normal jump and attack buttons, which is Z and X on the keyboard, and a second tier attack, which is C on the keyboard. One added feature is some characters can switch out weapons. That is done with the tab key. Playing on a keyboard can be a little difficult, making you stop the action, cycle through the weapon you want, and stopping again to cycle back to your original state. This is important to note, because most weapons you can cycle through usually have a limited amount of ammo, and is something that you'll want to use for just a part of the level you're playing. Overall, this is a well thought out product, and great for nostalgia or anyone who grew up with these games. The fun factor might be taken down a bit for those of us who've played the first version, but with all the significant changes to the characters, it does offer new challenges to a game that has been around for nearly 27 years. I encourage anyone who's watching this to spend a little of your free time to play this game. Jay is always working on updates and improvements, so it's worth revisiting even if you've already beat the game with every character. You can find both Jay Pavlina and Super Mario Bros. Crossover 2.0 at ExplodingRabbit.com or visit Radcast.com and click on Free Stuff to find links to the game there. Now that you are done wasting time, you can get back to work. <sighs> well thanks, I needed the break. You are welcome, just don't make a habit out of it. Remember, in order to be spared in the Robot Wars, you have to supply me with content. Not doing so will void our contract. Consider this a friendly reminder. Now back to work. And transmission. transmission.